Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be doing day two of Advent of Code 2023. If you don't know, Advent of Code is an annual challenge where Eric Wastel, a software developer, releases a puzzle every day in December up until the 25th to celebrate the days until Christmas. Actually, there's two parts to every puzzle in every day, and the second part is released after the first part is done. The story revolves around you, the protagonist, who are saving Christmas with a bunch of elves um, because you're sent on a mission from the North Pole. This year, it seems that snow production has stopped globally and our objective is to fix that by solving a bunch of programming puzzles. So the format of the puzzles is that you're given a description of the puzzle, you have an input file which contains a bunch of text and numbers, and your job is to produce uh, a single integer usually, or it could be a string that corresponds to the answer as prescribed by the problem. So in this video, I'm going to be doing the puzzles, there's going to be a time lapse, and then afterwards I'll explain the puzzles and then go over my solutions. As usual, my code is linked to in the description, so be sure to check that out and also take a look at my previous year's videos. I've done this since 2020, and I'd appreciate if you took a look at those previous years. So without further ado, let's start on the puzzles. All right, today we're playing a game with an elf. We have a bag of colored cubes, which are either red, green, or blue. And our job is to figure out information about the colors of the cubes in the bag. In particular, how many colors, how many of each color there are. So we're given a number of rounds in this game. So in total, I think there's like, a, let me pull up the puzzle input. There's a hundred games and in each of the hundred games, we're going to have a number of cubes pulled out from the box from the bag at a time. So the elf is going to take out some number of red, green, and blue cubes at a time. Um, in this case, in the first game, they first take out three blue and four red cubes, and I guess zero green cubes. They put them back in. Then the next time they take out one red and two green cubes, put them back in. Uh, sorry, one red, two green, and six blue, put them back in. And then last, they take out just two green cubes and then put them back in. So part one, the challenge is to identify uh, which games are possible, given that there's only 12 red cubes, 13 green cubes, and 14 blue cubes in the bag. So if at any time the elf ever pulls out more than 12 red, 13 green, or 14 blue cubes, then we invalidate that game. For example, in game three, uh, in the first turn, the elf takes out four, eight green, six blue and 20 red cubes, and that would be considered invalid because 20 is greater than 12. So we just need to identify which games are valid, meaning all of the possible combinations of cubes that are taken out, or all the cubes that are taken out um, are valid, and then add up those IDs, and that's the answer. So to do this, I used Python, as I usually do, and this is more or less a string manipulation problem. So let's take a look at the input. Uh, so first of all, we have to read our input, and I'm just using the standard reading in in Python. You take a file, you open up a file, you read it, uh, take off any white space at either end. There might be a new line at the end, so I'm just taking that off. Split it up by a new line, so now we have a list of strings, and every string contains a complete line which describes a game. Um, we're going to initialize our answer to zero because we're computing a sum, so we're going to add to this answer variable as we go. For every single line in the data, what we're going to do is first split it by this colon space delimiter because that's going to turn our string into two parts. The first part is going to be game n, uh, and the second part is going to be the rest uh, of the string, which contains the description of the game. To get the game ID, we're just going to take the first part, which is game n, split it by the space, so we have game and then n uh, as two elements in a list and we just turn the number into an integer. That's what this line is doing. Then we need to go through all of the separate rounds in the game. So for every sort of round, we need to calculate how many red, how many green, how many blue cubes there are. And then if any of them exceed the limit, then we invalidate that entire game. So good is basically saying, is this game possible? We go through all of the possible rounds in the game by splitting by this semicolon space character uh, and then each of them could have up to three parts, and each of the parts are delimited by a comma space. So a part in this case is just going to be N, and then the color, which is either red, green, or blue. I realize my hands are probably in the wrong order because I'm facing the camera. So it's N, and then a string, which is either red, green, or blue. So that's what this line is doing. We're taking the part and then just splitting it into integer color. Uh, we have to turn the integer into an integer so we can actually compare it, though. Um, the limit for red cubes is 12, so if there's more than 12 and it's red, invalidate. If it's blue and there's more than 14, invalidate. If there's 13, if there's more than 13 and it's green, then we also invalidate. So 
in any of these cases, there's going to be, we're going to exceed the limit of the number of that color cubes we have, in which case the entire game is invalid. We mark this good variable as false. We just break out of the loop um, and we break out again because we have two nested loops, one for each of the rounds and one for each of the colors. So if this game is invalidated, we just break out of everything. And if by the end, all of the parts are validated in each of the games, then we're good and we can just add our ID to the answer. There's probably a faster way to do this with regular expressions, maybe, um, because you really only have to search through all of the occurrences of like n green or n red or n blue. And then you just have to make sure that in any game, none of those exceed the limits. But I was too lazy to think about the regular expression approach. So there's probably a way of doing it. I can't be bothered to do it, to be honest. Um, and this is direct enough. It's pretty explicit, in my opinion. So that's part one. For part two, um, we are asked to identify the power of the sets. Okay, so I guess set is what is the term they're using for round. Um, and essentially, we need to identify how many of each color cube we need for all of the games, uh, for every game, um, for it to be possible. So, for instance, in this game three, where we have 20 red cubes, we would need at least 20 red cubes. And then we look at all the other color cubes, for example, blue, seems like we need at least six blue uh, in here, and at least eight green, or at least 13 green, because that's the maximum number of that color that have appeared. So we need 20 red, eight blue, sorry, six blue and 13 green, what we're going to do is multiply all of those counts together. And that's going to be the power of that uh, set of cubes for that game. And at the end, we need to add up all of these powers. It's really easy to build off of the original code. So we've already identified how many red, how many green, and how many blue cubes exist in every draw. And we basically just need to like take the maximum of all of those. So for a single game, we know what's the maximum number of reds because we're keeping tally of that by taking this variable R and maxing it with a number of reds for every draw. And then at the end, we know how many reds, how many blues, how many greens we need, multiply all those together and add them to the answer. So it's a pretty direct manipulation of the first part. And we actually don't need game IDs in this uh, problem two, puzzle two. So that part's good. Seems like in a lot of the early puzzles or even in the later puddles, puzzles, there's a number of games that are played, especially with the elves, because you're like stalling for time or something. In this case, we're walking to Snow Island and we have a ways to walk, so we're just going to play this game with the elf in the meantime. That's just to know about the story. It's kind of fun to know, you know, there's games that are happening as you're doing this quest to save Christmas because it makes it a little bit lighthearted, you know? But I think that should be it for day two puzzles and explanations. As usual, my code will be published to the GitHub repository, which is linked to in the description. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. I'm making a playlist with all of this year's videos, so make sure to check that out as well. And also take a look at previous year's videos. I've done Advent of Code since 2020, so there's three playlists up on my channel. They'll be linked in the description as well. Be sure to check those out. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.